Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of NASCAR Underdogs, Kenny Wallace. Kenny Wallace is the youngest of three racing Wallace brothers, others being Rusty and Mike. He made his first Xfinity Series start at Martinsville in the fall in 1988, when Dale Earnhardt let him drive his number 8 GM Goodrich Chevy starting 26th and to a 11th place finish. Then in 1989, Kenny was able to run full-time in the Xfinity Series behind the wheel of the number 36 Cox Treated Lumber Pontiac owned by his brother Rusty Wallace. His best start was first three times at Daytona, Nashville, and Louisville in the spring. His best finish was third twice at Nashville in the spring and Richmond in the fall. Overall, he scored three poles, zero wins, four top fives, and 16 top tens, finishing sixth in final Xfinity Series points. On his way to the Xfinity Series 1989 Rookie of the Year. Once again in 1990, Wallace returned to his brother's number 36 team full-time in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. His best start was first at Darlington in the spring. His best finish was second at Lanier in the spring. Overall, he scored one pole, zero wins, four top fives, and 14 top tens, finishing seventh in final Xfinity Series points. Kenny also made his NASCAR Cup Series debut at North Wilkesboro in the spring, driving a number 36 Cox Treated Lumber Pontiac owned by Randy Hope, starting 28th and finishing 26th. After a couple successful Xfinity Series seasons, Kenny Wallace returned to the number 36 Cox Treated Lumber Pontiac team full time. Steve Bird served as the team's crew chief. His best start was first at Rougemont in the fall. His best finish was first twice at Volusia County in the spring and Loudoun in the summer. Overall, he scored one pole, two wins, 11 top fives, and 17 top tens, finishing second in Xfinity Series points. In the Cup Series, he actually made five starts with two different, different teams, making two starts in the number 42 Mellow Yellow Pontiac for Felix Sabatis, filling in for an injured Kyle Petty. His best start was 15th at Dover in the spring, and his best finish was 13th at Charlotte in the spring. Then he made three starts for the number 24 Team 3 Racing Pontiac. His best, best start was 29th at Richmond in the fall, and his best finish was 23rd at Atlanta in the fall. For the 1992 Xfinity Series season, Kenny Wallace returned to his brother's number 36 Dirt Devil Pontiac. His best start was first four times at Nazareth in the spring, Watkins Glen and Loudoun in the summer, and Bristol in the fall. His best finish was first at Martinsville in the spring. Overall, he scored four poles, one win, seven top fives, and 15 top tens, finishing sixth in final Xfinity Series points. Now, in 1993, Kenny finally got the opportunity to drive in the NASCAR Cup Series full-time, driving the number 40 Dirt Devil Pontiac for Felix Sabatis, with... NASCAR Cup Series champion crew chief Jeff Hammond as the team's crew chief. His best start was 14th at Michigan in the summer, and his best finish was 9th twice at Watkins Glen and Bristol in the summer. Overall, he scored three top tens, finishing 23rd in final NASCAR Cup Series point standings. At the conclusion of the season, Wallace and Sabatis parted ways. After a somewhat successful season in the Cup Series in 1994, Kenny decided to drop back to the Xfinity Series full-time, driving the number 8 for, Fi for Phil Martossi. Gil Martin served as the team's crew chief. His best start was first at Nazareth in the spring, and his best finish was first at Bristol and Martinsville in the fall. Overall, he scored one pole, three wins, 11 top fives, and 15 top tens, finishing fourth in final Xfinity Series points. In the Cup Series, Wallace made 12 starts. One for Phil Martossi in the number 81 at Michigan in the spring, starting 22nd and finishing 19th. He also made one start for Charles Hardy in the number 44 bus fuses Ford at Talladega in the summer, starting 16th and finishing 9th. Then Robert Yates Racing was in need of a fill-in driver while their normal driver, Ernie Irvin, healed up from injuries sustained in an accident at Michigan. So, Wallace made the final 10 starts of the 1994 Cup Series season. Behind the wheel of the number 28, Texaco Haviland Ford. His best start was second at Atlanta in the fall. His best finish was fourth at Martinsville in the fall. Overall, in 10 starts, he scored one top five and two top tens. Phil Martossi decided to run both Cup Series and Xfinity Series in select races in 1995. In the Cup Series, 
Kenny drove the number 81 TIC Financial Ford. He attempted 20 races, DQing 9 times. In 11 starts, his best start was 10th at Michigan in the summer, and his best finish was 18th at Dover in the spring. Back on the Xfinity Series side, Wallace drove the number 8 Red Dog Ford. In 15 starts, his best start was 3rd 3 times, in Nashville in the spring, then Richmond and Homestead in the fall. His best finish was 1st at Richmond in the spring. Overall, he scored 0 poles, 1 win, 5 top 5s, and 7 top 10s. Also, in 95, Earl Barber fielded the number 90 Red Dog Ford truck for 3 starts for Kenny. His best start was 8th at North Wilkesboro in the summer, and his best finish was 4th at Martinsville in the summer. The Martossi owned team remained competitive in 1996. In the Xfinity Series, Wallace attempted 12 races, qualifying for 10 of them. His best start was 2nd in Nashville in the spring, and his best finish was first at Richmond in the fall. Overall, he scored zero poles, one win, three top fives, and four top tens. Kenny also made six Craftsman Truck Series starts. In the number 22, Red Dog Ford, owned by Roger Penske. His best start was seventh at IRP in the spring. His best finish was fourth at North Booksboro in the summer. Overall, in six starts, he scored one top five and two top tens. On the Cup Series side, the team ran the full schedule with the number 81 square D Ford. His best start was 7th three times at Darlington in the spring, Bristol, and Phoenix in the fall. His best finish was 7th at Rockingham in the spring. Overall, he scored two top 10s in 20 and finished 28th in Final Cup Series points. Once again, Kenny Wallace would remain in the Phil Martossi, with the Phil Martossi team for the 1997 NASCAR season. In the Xfinity Series, he made one start at Richmond in the fall, starting 27th and finishing 26th, driving a number 12 gray bar Ford for Martossi. Though, on the Cup Series side, Wallace was behind the wheel of the number 81 square D Ford full-time. Gil Martin served as crew chief the previous season and for the first 10 races of this season. Newt Moore ended up being his replacement on the box. His best start was first twice at Martinsville in the spring and Bristol in the fall. His best finish was sixth twice, both races at Martinsville. Overall, he scored two top tens and finished 33rd in final points. In 1998, Wallace returned to his number 81 square D Ford full time. Unfortunately, they D and Q'd for the Daytona 500 and the summer race at Michigan. His best start was second at Rockingham in the spring, and his best finish was sixth at Loudoun in the summer. Overall, he scored zero poles, zero wins, zero top fives, and seven top tens, finishing 31st in final point standings. Ed Renzi decided to let Kenny Wallace drive his Xfinity Series number 25, Duralube Chevrolet. This season, Jimmy Elledge served as the team's crew chief in 1999. In, 19, in 18 starts, his best start was sixth at Dover in the fall, and his best finish was was fourth at Richmond in the fall. Overall, he scored zero wins, two top fives, and nine top tens. At the conclusion of the 1998 season, Andy Petrie purchased the team from Phil Martossi. His best start was second at Richmond in the fall. His best finish was second at Loudoun in the summer. Overall, he scored three top fives and five top tens, finishing 22nd final points. The year 2000, a brand new century, yet Kenny remained with the team. He had driven for the year before. Ed Renzi's number 25, Lance Snacks Chevrolet. His best start was 8th twice at Rockingham in the spring. His best finish was 4th twice at Bristol, both races. He only made 14 Xfinity Series starts throughout the season. Then, in the Cup Series, Kenny returned to the number 55 Square D Chevrolet full-time for Andy Petrie. His best start was 2nd twice at Bristol and Martinsville in the spring. Then his best finish was second, Talladega, in the, in the fall, pushing Dale Earnhardt in his number three good, GM Goodrich Chevrolet to his final career victory. Of course, we all know about four months later, he would lose his life in a horrific head-on collision with the wall on the final lap of the 2001 Daytona 500. Overall, Wallace scored zero poles, zero wins, one top five, and one top ten, finishing 26th in final Cup Series points. At the end of the season, Wallace and Petrie parted ways. To begin the 2001 NASCAR Cup Series season, Wallace was behind the wheel of the Eel River Racing's number 27 Duke's Mayonnaise Pontiac.
His best is he made the first 13 races of the season driving the car. His best start was 23rd at Daytona in the spring, and his best finish was 25th twice at Daytona and Texas in the spring. Then, after race 13 at Dover, he and the team de would for three straight races, and they parted ways. Following a freak accident during an Xfinity Series race, under caution, Steve Park's steering wheel came off, making the car suddenly veer to the left. This was during a caution. But when he veered left, Larry Foyt was the lucky dog, and he was getting his lap back, flying by everyone on the inside, until Park suddenly veered left. Kaboom! So, starting at race 25 at Darlington, Kenny took over the driving duties of number one, Penzoil Chevrolet, for the EI. His best start was first, and his best finish was second, both coming in the fall at Rockingham. Overall, in 12 starts, he scored one pole, zero wins, one top five, and two top tens. In the Xfinity Series, Wallace joined Innovative Motorsports, driving their number 48 Gould Pump Chevrolet team. His best start was first, twice, at Pikes Peak and IRP in the summer. His best finish was first at Rockingham in the fall. Overall, he scored two poles, one win, seven top fives, and 13 top tens finishing 10th in final Xfinity Series points. That next season, in 2002, in the Cup Series, the season began by running the first four races of the season behind the wheel of that DEI number 1 Penzoil Chevrolet. His best start was 9th, and his best finish was 10th, both coming at Rockingham in the spring. Then he and DEI parted ways. He made one start in place of Kevin Harvick in the, in the RCR number 29 GM Goodrich Chevrolet at Martinsville in the spring starting 7th, finishing 32nd. Michael Walter put him in, in his R&D ride, that, the number 98 Aaron's Chevrolet, at Talladega in the spring, starting 27th, finishing 21st. Innovative Motorsports fielded a Cup Series team, a number 98 Stacker 2 Chevrolet for four starts. His best start was 15th at Daytona in the summer. His best finish was 29th at Chicago in the summer. Ironically, again, starting at race 25 at Darlington, he made his first start for Bill Davis Racing in the number 23 Hills Brothers Coffee Dodge. Felipe Lopez was the, the team's crew chief. He made 10 starts to end the season. His best start was 6th. His best finish was 11th, both coming at Phoenix in the fall. He also made a one-off start for Andy Petrie at Talladega in the fall, driving in number 33 1-800-CALL-ATT Chevrolet, starting 36th and finishing 33rd. As for the Xfinity Series, he remained with Innovative Motorsports and the number 48 Stacker 2 Chevrolet team. His best start was 4th at Pikes Peak in the summer, and his best finish was 5th twice at Darlington in the spring and IRP in the summer. Overall, he scored 0 poles, 0 wins, 2 top 5s, and 13 top 10s, finishing 7th at Final Xfinity Series points. Kenny was able to jump back into the Cup Series full-time in 2003, driving the Bill Davis Racing number 23 Stacker 2 Dodge. His best start was 4th, at Martinsville in the fall, and his best finish was 10th at Bristol in the spring. Overall, he scored one top 10, finishing 30th in Final Cup Series points. In the Xfinity Series, he made one start at Gateway in the spring, driving a number 99 St. Louis Cardinals Chevrolet, owned by Michael Waltrip, starting 7th, finishing 10th. Next up, in 2004, Ken made select starts for Michael Waltrip Racing in the number 00 Aaron Chevrolet. In the Cup Series. In four starts, his best start was 22nd at Indy in the summer, and his best finish was 22nd at Homestead in the fall. He also made a one-off start for DEI in the number one Chevrolet at Talladega in the fall, starting 43rd and finishing 32nd. In the Xfinity Series, he and the ride he had in the Cup Series, he now had in the Xfinity Series, the number 23 Stacker 2 Chevrolet. He did DNQ for Rockingham due to lack lack of owner points from the previous year. Therefore, Davis bought Stanton Barrett's spot in the field in a number 91 Pontiac. He started 43rd and finished 16th. See, the way they determined if you were eligible for provisional was for the first five races of the season. They went by the previous season's owner points. Now, Kenny's best start was third twice at Darlington in the spring and Bristol in the fall. His best finish was sixth at Talladega in the spring. Overall, he scored 10 top 10s finishing ninth in final Xfinity Series points. In 2005, Wallace made five Cup Series starts for three different teams, two in the double zero for Michael Waltrip. His best start was 21st Daytona in the spring, and his best finish was 27th 
at Darlington in the spring. He made one start in the number 78 for Furniture Row Motorsports at Dover in the fall, starting 43rd and finishing 34th. Then, when Jack Roush and Kirk Bush had their falling out, and Roush let Bush go early, Kenny was able to make two starts in the number 97 Irwin Tools Ford. His best start was 17th, and his best finish was 16th, both coming at Phoenix in the fall. At the beginning of the 05 season, PPC Racing signed Wallace to drive the number 22 full-time in the Xfinity Series. His best start was 6th four times at Darlington in the spring, then Michigan, Richmond, and Charlotte in the fall. His best finish was 2nd three times, both races at Nashville and Darlington in the spring. Overall, he scored 0 poles, 0 wins, 5 top 5s, and 11 top 10s, finishing 7th in final Xfinity Series points. 2006 was a bit of a struggle for Wallace. He signed on to drive the number 78 Furniture Row Racing Chevrolet full-time in the Cup Series, only qualifying for 17 races, D and Qing for the remainder of them. His best start was 19th at Loudoun in the summer, and his best finish was 25th twice at Phoenix and Richmond in the spring. Overall, in the Xf over in the Xfinity Series, he remained with PPC Racing in the number 22 AutoZone Ford full-time. Randy Cox started out the season as the team's crew chief, but by race 23 at IRP, he was completely replaced by future NASCAR Cup Series championship crew chief Todd Gordon. Wallace's best start was third twice at Charlotte in the spring and Phoenix in the fall. His best finish was eighth three times at Bristol and Nashville in the spring, then Milwaukee in the summer. Overall, he scored four top tens, finishing 11th in final Xfinity Series points. For the 2007 NASCAR season, Kenny Wallace made one Craftsman Truck Series start at Gateway in the summer, driving a number 51 Chevrolet owned by Billy Ballou, starting 11th and finishing 13th. He also made two Xfinity Series starts, one for Ed Renzi in the number 25 Ford at California, starting 27th and finishing 26th. Then at Gateway in the summer, RCR put him in their number 2 Jimmy John Chevrolet, starting 25th and finishing 34th. In the Cup Series, Wallace was the driver of the number 78 Chevrolet for Furniture Row for the first 22 races. They qualified for 10 of them, Dean Kuhn for 12. His best start was 6th twice at Talladega and Darlington in the spring. His best finish was 21st at Bristol in the spring. He made one start in the number 45 Wells Fargo Dodge for Petty Enterprises at Bristol in the fall, starting 32nd and finishing 32nd. His final four starts of the 07 season came when Robert Yates Racing needed a fill-in driver for the number 88 Snickers Ford in place of Ricky Rudd. His best start was 22nd at Richmond in the fall, and his best finish was 23rd at Dover in the fall. After having a very difficult 2007, Furniture Row Racing and Kenny Wallace still attempted and qualified for the 2008 Daytona 500 in a second team car for for the team, the number 87 Chevrolet. He started 17th and finished 43rd. At Talladega in the fall, Michael Walter Racing put him in their number double zero champion mortgage Toyota, starting 14th and finishing 12th. He made another one-off start in the Craftsman Truck Series, driving for Billy Ballou in the number 15 Toyota at Phoenix in the fall, starting 23rd and finishing 22nd. In the Xfinity Series, he attempted all the races, Dean Kewing for the season opener at Daytona. He ran the first five races of the season for Armando Fitz in the number 36 Dodge. His best start was 32nd twice at Atlanta and Bristol in the spring. His best finish was the 16th at Bristol in the spring. Then he started driving the number 28 U.S. Border Patrol Chevrolet full-time at race 6 at Nashville. His best finish was 3rd at Memphis in the fall. Overall, he scored one top five and one top ten. Finished 16th in final point standing. Kenny Wallace returned to the number 28 U.S. Border Patrol Chevrolet owned by Jay Robinson in the Xfinity Series full-time for the 2009 season. His best start was 5th at Memphis in the fall. His best finish was 7th at Iowa in the summer. Overall, he scored two top ten, finishing 11th in Final Xfinity Series points. For the third season in a row in 2010, 
Wallace returned to the J. Robinson owned number 28 Xfinity Series team. His best start was 16th at Bristol in the fall, and his best finish was 11th at Talladega in the spring, finishing 19th in final Xfinity Series points. At the conclusion of the 2010 season, Wallace and Robinson parted ways. That following season, 2011, Kenny found a new ride, the number 09 Toyota from RAB Racing for Robbie Benton. His best start was 4th at Bristol in the fall, and his best finish was 5th at Richmond in the fall. Overall, he scored 0 poles, 0 wins, 1 top 5, and 11 top 10s, finishing 7th in the final Xfinity Series points. Even though they had a decent season, RAB Racing was not able to attract sponsors. Therefore, in 2012, the team only ran 14 races. They, they used the number 09 for 5 starts, the number 24 for 1 start, and the number 99 for 7 starts. His best start was third at Phoenix in the spring, and his best finish was fourth at Chicago in the summer. Overall, he scored one top five and three top tens. In 2013, Wallace made two more Craftsman Truck Series starts for Bobby Dodder in his number 81 Toyota. His best start was fourth, and his best finish was 17th, both coming at Eldora in the spring. In the Xfinity Series, he made seven more starts for RAB Racing in the number 29 Toyota. His best start was 5th at Richmond in the spring, and his best finish was 13th at Iowa in the spring. For 2014, Benton and Wallace entered one Xfinity Series race at Iowa in the summer, in that number 29 Toyota, starting 19th and finishing 19th. His final season in the top three, seri top three series was 2015. He made three Xfinity Series starts, the final one of which was the best run, in a ride owned by Joe Gibbs. He started 7th, and he finished 15th at Iowa in the summer. To date, this has been, and more than likely will be, his final start in NAS NASCAR's top 3 series. Well, in 344 Cup Series starts, he scored 3 poles, 0 wins, 6 top 5s, and 27 top 10s. Then in the next Fendi series, he made 547 starts, scoring 10 poles, 9 wins, 66 top 5s, and 173 top 10s. Thank you for watching, and take care. Thank you.